Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. I was recently approached by Racket from the UK about doing build and demo videos for some of their awesome beginner kits. So today we're building their Baby 8 sequencer, a very useful take on the classic Baby 10, which you can even use with your modular if you have one. It has LEDs and knobs for each step, as well as gate switches, which change function between reset and skip via a separate mode switch. There's an internal clock with speed and gate length controls, and mini jack gate and CV outputs, as well as a clock input which disables the internal clock. I was actually a little arrogant approaching this. I just dove in without reading the manual. You'll soon see why that wasn't a good idea. Do follow the manual as you're building this. It's a simple build, but there are some important details. In the box they sent me were the little kit baggies for many of their kits, each baggie including all of the parts and boards necessary to complete each build, as well as resistor value guides and a few stickers. So let's build this baby. I started with the resistors and diodes, soldering the flat ones from above as usual. But I soon realized I should have left these standing resistors for later, as they made it more difficult to install the ICs. I had to use my snake charmer technique, with the solder free floating while I held each IC in place with one hand and the iron with the other. Also, the kit came without IC sockets, which I thought was unusual. I do recommend you get some and use them if your kit doesn't include them though I think Daryl will add sockets to future kits. And here was my first major mistake from not reading the manual. I assumed the writing on the silk screen would line up with the writing on the IC, so I soldered on the CD4017 upside down. And it burned up on power up, a lot of magic smoke. And since I didn't use a socket, I had to cut it off and remove one leg at a time. There's a visible burn on my otherwise super nice white PCB now. I found a replacement IC fairly quickly though and used the socket on my second try, and everything was fine, but this hassle could have easily been avoided if only I had looked at the guide. Next I installed all of the ceramic capacitors, followed by the transistors, then the toggle switches, taking care to keep them nice and straight when soldering. You can start by soldering just one lead of each switch, so you can adjust them easily before soldering the other two leads. The mode switch goes on the component side, while the gate and power switches go on the top side, where the pots and LEDs will go. The LED placement was a little confusing at first because the silk screen for them is on the component side, but it's pretty obvious that the LEDs actually should go where the controls are. Then I installed the pots. Take notice that the tempo pot is a different value than the rest. Again, make sure to line them up nicely before finishing the soldering job. I then installed the electrolytic capacitors, which is when I finally had a look at the guide to make sure I got the polarities right. And finally, the three jacks which go on the component side and the female header for interfacing with other devices. There's also a single resistor which goes on the top side. Now attach the clever legs made of nylon standoffs and the battery clip, looping the red and black wires through the hole next to the pads for strain relief. You're done. Turn it on and watch the LEDs go. Or in my case, smell the magic smoke because I didn't read the manual. <laughs> now watch as it controls one of my synth voices while I play with it a little bit. I hope you liked this video, stay tuned for the next one on the Racket drum synth. And following that, a demo video featuring both units. As always, please like and subscribe and join our Patreon. See you soon and stay noisy!